I'm gonna build a sick hardtail mountain bike frame in this shop, steel frame, TIG welded construction. I'm gonna do videos that document every step of the process and I'm gonna explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's gonna be totally awesome. You're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button right now because you don't wanna miss a single video. Let's get this project kicked off. So when I'm starting to build a custom bike frame and I'm designing it, I'm getting the project rolling, there's a couple main considerations that are going to guide everything and that's where you start. So in this case I'm building a bike for myself and I know what kind of bike I want it to be and so really I need to know like who am I, how am I going to use it, so like my physical body that I have, what size is it, how strong I am, how am I going to use it? You know, this is a mountain bike. What kinds of trails am I going to ride it on? Uh, you know, does it need to be really lightweight? Does it need to be really tough? Does it need to have, uh, you know, mounts for me to put on all sorts of stuff so I can carry things with me in my bike packing? Or is it more of like a shredder bike that I'm going to throw on the roof of my car, drive it to the trail, use it, then throw it back on my car and bring it home? You know, or is this like a, a bike packing bike where you, you're going like bike touring basically and you're bringing everything with you, you know, all these things. And then one of the real big considerations after you know who it's for and how it's going to be used is what parts are going to go on it. So you need to be able to fit your crank set. You need to be able to fit your wheel set. You need to have clearance for the tires that you intend to put on it in the beginning. And you also need to have, if you're going to, you know, change tires over the lifespan of it, you need to be able to fit the tires that you want to be able to fit. Uh, you know, you need it to play nice with the fork. So I want to use a suspension fork here. And so I'm going to think about all those things. The next video in the series, I'm going to be in Bike Cat and I'm going to be designing it. And I'm going to be looking at the specs for the different parts. And I'm going to be putting it all together. And this this one I'm just getting my thoughts together about what is driving the project and what are the main considerations for it. So we're going to work backwards. I'm thinking this summer I'm going to be shredding the gnar on the local mountain bike trails in central New York and hopefully other places. And so I'm imagining this finished bike and now I'm going to work back from that imagined bicycle to where I'm at now and what I know right now. I know the proportions of my body. I know, you know, like which parts basically I want to put on the bike and I need to fill in a lot of blanks. So uh, th there's a trend in mountain bike design lately for hardtail mountain bikes and a hardtail is, you know, suspension fork and no suspension in the rear end. Uh, there's a trend to have especially slack head tube angle with a, you know, longer travel fork and then really short chain stays and then to have like a dropper seat post. A dropper seat post works like an office chair. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! Where you pull a little lever and you can push it down and then and then if you pull that lever you can come back up again except the lever is on your handlebars and it's the saddle of your bike. So you can push the seat down, get it out of the way if you want to uh, get over a log or, or drop off of something and then if you're cruising on the flat and you want your your optimal uh, uh, cadence and, and pedaling performance then you raise your seat up again you have the best of both worlds so I want that kind of bike that's what I'm imagining for myself and, uh, and you know I'm gonna build it for me and so I, I know me and I have an idea of what I want to do with it and I know the trails in my area more or less. But if I was building it for someone else, it'd be a series of questions. I would say, so what kind of gnar would you like to shred and where might you be shredding this gnar? And so through those kinds of questions, we would suss out what it was we were trying to build and you know the driving considerations, you know the salient considerations. Is this customer, is this person looking more for a, a comfortable ride? Are they looking for something really aggressive and fast and sporty? Are they looking for something that's super Super duper lightweight and maybe costs more money and is maybe not necessarily as robust or they're looking for like the tank of a bike they couldn't possibly break and they don't care if it's heavy and you know whatever there's like all these different competing considerations and so we want to think about big picture stuff right now in the beginning before we've selected the tubing before we've selected the parts before we have decided on the geometry we're just thinking big picture about where we want to go and we're gonna work back from that so before we get too far into the design of the specifics we need to just answer all these big picture questions. I need to know exactly the wheel platform. I need to know 
the travel on the fork, those are really big questions. So like I'm gonna have 29er wheel set. I'm six foot tall and when I put uh, my, you know, when, when someone of, of my body height gets on a frame, if you have smaller wheels, that can really be advantageous for shorter riders and it can be really advantageous for certain kinds of riding and it can be really good for full suspension frames where you need the travel in the frame. But for someone of my height, for a hardtail, uh, you know, if you're like uh, high fives or you get into six feet and taller, really makes sense from what I understand to have a 29er and so I'm gonna do a 29er wheel set with something like 2.4 tires or 2.6 tires you know that's the width in inches of the tire and then uh, I need to make decisions on that because that affects everything you know am I gonna go with a little bit narrower or a little bit wider tires what's available you know what do I what do I have to work with and what do I want do I want a bigger tire on the front or the back and so I need to do a little bit of research about exactly uh, what I want and what's out there and then the fork is a really big consideration because a fork that has more travel is going to allow you to drop off a bigger stuff and absorb more shock but it's a taller fork so the distance from the hub to the crown race seat is longer and under the you know appropriate amount of suspension sag like 20% or whatever it is for your body weight uh, however you adjust it then um, that's a different distance and that affects how high the handlebars sit and basically where the bottom of your down tube needs to be the bottom of your head tube needs to be and so uh, in order to design the frame you really need you know a lot of the the considerations of the parts to be chosen and figured out so you have those specs because basically in the design process you have like I've heard people say you have like driving and driven dimensions and so some dimensions of the frame just end up being what they end up being and it's totally inconsequential you know it might be this number of millimeters or it might be this number whatever who cares that's just a result of these other driven dimensions and so you start with what you know and then you can work and you can fill in the blanks so I know that I want a suspension fork I need to choose exactly which model I know roughly the wheel size I want I just need to choose exactly that I need to choose hub standards I think I'm gonna use uh, the boost hub standard because that seems to be the the contemporary standard now that everybody's using and so you know I'll just build a bike for those standards but uh, there's that you know and then and then a crank with those chain with that chain line and um, I'm gonna be building the bike with a seat tube that fits a diameter of seat post that you know, I want to have a dropper seat post, and in order to fit that, I need to have the uh, the clearance for that diameter seat post. So I can't make a seat tube that'll fit a 27.2 millimeter seat post like you would have done 10 years ago, because that's not going to fit uh, a dropper seat post, or it's not going to give you many options. So I need to think about all the parts that I know that will go on it. And then I also need to think, you know, in terms of like how heavy wall of the tubes do I want to use or what diameter of tubes do I want to use. I need to know how I'm going to be riding the frame and where I'm going to be riding it and, you know, uh, how strong I am. Am I going to be dropping it off huge jumps or like I'm kind of a wuss at this point and I'm like afraid of hurting myself and not being able to like work in my shop, you know. I broke my hip. Uh, four years ago and I was out of commission for a long time and I'm really glad I didn't need to support myself at that point in my life and uh, right now if I hurt myself you know that's a whole consideration so anyway uh, I don't think I'm gonna be dropping it off huge stuff and uh, it's all these big picture considerations that you you start with so that you've you've like kind of defined the scope of everything so I'm getting my thoughts together and basically what I want in the end is I want a bicycle that's steel TIG welded frame I'm gonna bend a lot of the tubes the seat tube is gonna be bent to help facilitate those short chain stays otherwise you'd have an interference between the tire and the seat tube or you would at least have interference between like mud on the tire and the seat tube but I think it's gonna be short enough I will need to actually bend the seat tube so I'll do that on this bad boy and then also the the seat stays and the chain stays will need to be bent for tire clearance. Uh, the down tube might get a bend in it for fork crown clearance. So on a mountain bike when your handlebars are straight and your fork crown is, is straight, then you don't need to worry about it. But if you were to ever turn your handlebars 90 degrees, like, you know, if you crash your bike or if you're, if you're throwing it in the back of a bed of a pickup truck or something and the handlebars get turned 90 degrees, that fork crown on a mountain bike can actually collide with your down tube if you haven't designed it right. And so one of the ways that you can address that is to bend the down tube. And I think I'm going to do that I think after I get all of the the tubes you know cut and welded I get the brazing done and I do the finish machining 
and we've gone through all the steps of the process to get the frame ready for paint. I think I'm probably gonna take it to get powder coated. I've done that on a lot of my bikes. I love the beauty of a multiple color wet paint job, but they cost a fortune. And uh, so, you know, I'm not gonna do that on this build unless I'm feeling like I got that extra cash. And, uh, you know, we'll see where I'm at, but for right now, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do a single color powder coat and I'm gonna try and make it look the best that I can. I'm gonna put on the vinyl decals that say the Cobra and I'm gonna put on my badass head tube badge with the snake wearing sunglasses and I'm gonna you know build it up with all the parts that I can uh, you know the best stuff that I can get my hands on and set up the tubeless tires and stuff and uh, you know I'm gonna take you along through all the steps of the process and uh, it just gets me excited thinking about it. I've wanted to make this bike for a long time so uh, yeah definitely hit that subscribe button and hang around because it's gonna get real good